there are uh, five targets of the corticobulbar tract. They are motor trigeminal, ambiguous, nucleus ambiguous, the hypoglossal nucleus, and the spinal accessory nucleus, which is essentially the, the ventral horn of the cervical cord. The fifth one is the facial nucleus, which we're going to talk about separately. Okay? So we're just going to talk about the four sort of straightforward ones, and then we're going to leave the facial nucleus, which is a colossal topic uh, for uh, the next video. So um, motor trigeminal has a bi there's bilateral innervation coming from motor cortex to motor trigeminal uh, nucleus. Lesions there in part possibly because of this bilaterality and also be in part because the, the jaw is, is joined. Um, and so there's a sort of a physical constraint on, on difficulty in, in uh, chewing. Uh, in, you just simply don't see uh, significant or at least common uh, clinical problems arising from an interruption of the corticobulbar tract to the uh, motor trigeminal. So if you had a whole corticobulbar tract lesion that lesioned the whole thing, you still would probably not see any chewing difficulties. So this is probably going to be asymptomatic and we don't have to worry about it. Now, ambiguous is also uh, the, the, the innervation um, or, or the structure is bilateral. And the innervation might even be bilateral or with, possibly with a preference. But the, the effect of, an, of a lesion of the cortical bulbar tract too ambiguous is typically very uh, obvious. And it's going to cause uh, dysarthria, dysphagia, and possibly hoarseness. This, um, this is certainly not the uh, cortical bulbar tract lesion uh, to, to ambiguous is certainly not the only way to get these symptoms. We've seen that, uh, a, for instance, a cranial nerve lesion of either 9 or 10 can also get you there. Um, but this is symptomatic, okay? So it's a, and it's a common symptom. It's a problematic symptom. People don't like it. And as a result of a lesion of the, the corticobulbar tract to the hypoglossal nucleus, there will be a, a deviation of the tongue. When the tongue is, is, when you stick out the tongue, the tongue will deviate. And finally, there is the, the innervation of the spinal accessory, which has two different, innervates two different muscles, sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. And the trapezius is going to cause a problem with shrugging, and the sternocleidomastoid is going to cause a problem in turning. Um, and both of those are, are very likely to be symptomatic. So the, um, the, the there, there, but there's a very bizarre um, situation with the, with the sternocleidomastoid, which is that it decussates twice, once in the pons and once in the spinal cord. And this leads to the, that the side that, the, um, that is weak depends on whether it's cut uh, above the pons, between the pons, or, or between the pons and the spinal cord. So which side it deviates to is going gonna, is gonna to depend on where the lesion is. The other thing that can happen with the, um, a lesion of the sternocleidomastoid is a winged scapula. Now, it's not the most common uh, cause of a winged scapula, but that can happen, which means that the, 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 the shoulder blade kind of sticks out. It's, it's not... It's not tucked into place. With the trapezius, the innervation is ipsilateral, so a lesion of the cortical bulbar tract will cause a, a, a deficit in shrugging on the same side as the lesion. Nucleus ambiguous, um, even though it's bilateral, uh, it, it disrupts the, the principal movements, speech and, and swallowing. Uh, Motor trigeminal is typically asymptomatic. The 
bottom line is that there will be a, a, uh, a tongue deviation when the person is asked to stick, stick out their tongue. Um, there also may be some problems with speech. Okay, so in the next uh, video, we're going to move on to the facial motor control.